Right, this is a quick video about fuses and circuit breakers. This here is a fuse, you might have seen a fuse uh, inside a plug at home. Uh, they often come, the ones that go in plugs often have written on the outside of them the current rating, something like that. This here is a circuit breaker, you might have seen them, uh, you'll have a load of these at home maybe in the cupboard under the stairs or something there'll be a bunch of circuit breakers um, and again they will usually have a current rating on like this one is 20 amps. Uh, what are they for and how do they work? Well fuses uh, and circuit breakers are designed to break a circuit if too much current flows. So if there is too much current flowing in a circuit both of these things can be used to break the circuit and stop the current flowing. Okay, so they're both used for the same job. Why would you want to do this? Well, if you have too much current flowing, uh, stuff gets hot. Uh, if stuff gets hot, it might melt, uh, it might break, or it might even catch fire. So if you have a fault in a device and lots of current ends up flowing, uh, that fire device could be uh, damaged or even cause a fire unless something stops the current flow. So that's what these are used for. Note that on their own uh, neither of these are particularly useful for preventing electrocution of you, okay, because the current ratings are so high. 3 amps for this one, 20 amps for this one, if 3 amps of current or 20 amps of current flowed through you, you would be dead without a shadow of a doubt. The human body can't, uh, can't cope with that much current by any stretch. Um, so alone, fuses and circuit breakers are, are no good for protecting you as a human being. However, as part of an earthing system, they do help prevent you from being electrocuted, but that's part of a that'll be a separate video on earthing systems. So alone, they're they're no good for protecting you, they're mainly for stopping stuff catching fire. Uh, how do they work? Fuses could not be simpler. Uh, basically inside a fuse is a piece of wire and they're different fuses will have different pieces of wire of different thicknesses. Uh, the idea is simply that uh, more current means the wire gets hotter. Simple as that, okay? The more current flowing through any element with resistance, uh, the hotter it gets. You'll have experienced this, uh, I imagine, probably in, in one practical lesson or another, that uh, if you make a lot of current flow through a wire by accident, it gets pretty hot. Now, if a wire keeps getting hotter and hotter because more and more current's flowing, eventually the metal in the wire is going to melt. And when the metal in the wire melts, okay, like this, okay, and starts dripping inside the uh, glass case of the fuse, then the circuit is broken and, and current ceases to flow. So fuses work by melting when a particular current flows, when a particular amount of current flows, uh, and when they melt the circuit is broken and no more current flows. Uh, and if you want current to flow again you've got to go out and buy a new fuse and replace the fuse. Different fuses have different fuse ratings. You might get a 3 amp fuse, you might get a 10 amp fuse, you might get a 13 amp fuse. They'll just have different thickness bits of wiring. The 13 amp one will be thicker, the 3 amp one will be thinner. And that's how fuses work. Couldn't be simpler. Okay. Uh, how circuit breakers work? Well, there's different ways. Uh, this is the classic one you need to know about. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so we'll have a wire coming in and that wire flows around a coil. Okay. It then goes up to a switch contact and then goes out again. So this is all one bit of wire. All right. Now in reality there's going to be some sort of uh, iron core or something inside this coil. This coil is, is basically an electromagnet so the iron core makes it stronger and this switchy bit here is going to uh, have, have something iron on it so that it can be attracted. So the idea is that as current flows, so this is then connected in your circuit, this circuit breaker is connected in your circuit, as current flows around the coil around here, through your circuit, um, the electromagnet becomes magnetised. Okay, so the electromagnet is magnetised when current flows. Now there's a little spring 
attached to this switch, okay, which is holding the switch closed and keeping the current flowing. But as more current flows, that leads to the electromagnet getting stronger. Okay, you'd have uh, done this at some other stage earlier, I'm sure, that one of the ways of increasing the strength of an electromagnet is to increase the current. So as more current flows, the electromagnet gets stronger and stronger until it becomes strong enough uh, to pull the switchy bit here down. Okay, When it becomes strong enough uh, to pull against that spring and pull the switch down, okay, because there's a bit of iron attached to the switch, which is attracted towards the electromagnet, then the circuit is open and then the current stops flowing. So when a certain current is reached, the switch is opened and uh, the current stops flowing. And then usually there's a little mechanism, a little latch, another little latchy type mechanism here, which will then keep that open. So if too much current flows and the switch is opened, there's a little latch that keeps the switch open so the current stops flowing and doesn't start flowing again. Then you have to go to the circuit breaker and then press a button or flip a switch and that undoes the latch. So uh, this circuit breaker here okay, is currently, uh, I don't know actually, I can't read whether it's in the on or the off position, but whatever position it's in, uh, if it were to open, you would have to physically go over to the circuit breaker and then switch it back on, close the switch again for it to work because of this little latchy thing here, okay, which is holding the switch open. So basically it's just an, electromagne an electromagnetic switch with a latch uh, and, and that's it. So when a certain amount of current flows, um, the switch is pulled open and a latch keeps it open. Now there's actually another way circuit breakers work as well, which I only just learned about and is really cool. And it's sort of similar to the way fuses work in that when current flows through something, it gets hot. Now, when current flows through things and they get hot, if they get really hot, they can melt. But before that, anything that heats up expands. Okay, so if you have a bit of metal and you heat it up, it expands. If you have another metal, different metal and you heat that up, uh, it expands. But not everything expands uh, 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 by the same amount for each change in temperature. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that the black metal here expands more than the red one. Okay. Now if you stick these two bits of metal together and heat them up, if the black one expands more than the red one, it ends up bending. Okay. This is called a bimetallic strip because bi meaning two, like bicycle, Okay, or biplane, meaning two. Bimetallic means two metals. A bimetallic strip bends when you heat it up because one of the metals uh, heats up more than the other. Now you can uh, incorporate this into a switch okay, by making this simply part of a switch circuit. So you can have your wire coming in, okay, you can have a contact here, and then that goes back out. Okay, so here's your circuit, simple as that. Okay. Uh, this end of the bimetallic strip is like bolted onto something. This end of the bimetallic strip is free to move. Okay. Now when current flows through, remember the bimetallic strip is metal so it conducts. When current flows through this circuit, okay, the bimetallic strip is going to warm up a little bit. Now if you choose the, the size of the bimetallic strip correctly, then you can make it so that when a particular current is reached, say 10 amps or 20 amps or whatever, then the temperature of the bimetallic strip is sufficient to make it bend, I'll just rotate this a bit, to make it bend enough that the switch contact is broken. Okay, so when a certain current is reached, the bimetallic strip gets to a certain temperature whereby the switch is broken. Once again, these ones have a little latch, so they've got a little latch that if it comes open, that holds it open until you go back and reset it. So when the switch opens, current stops flowing, there's a little latch that uh, holds the switch open until you go back and press a button and reset it. So this one also is another way of, uh, of, of breaking a circuit if too much current flows. Now what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well basically uh, circuit breakers are easier to reset. E 
easier to reset okay and you can't you can't use the wrong one with a fuse if a fuse blew and you you took the fuse out and replaced it you could potentially replace a fuse with the wrong fuse if a circuit breaker goes uh, you you're not going to change the circuit breaker you're just going to press the button uh, so you can't possibly accidentally uh, put the wrong circuit breaker in when you're replacing it uh, because you don't replace it you just press a button so that's about it there's not many other advantages uh, in terms of speed some are faster than others um, but speed, none of these are particularly amazingly brilliant at speed, okay? Uh, and none of them are particularly amazingly brilliant at protecting you, human beings. Uh, they're mainly to, for stopping stuff catching fire. Now, if you want to protect you, a human being, what you need is a residual current circuit breaker, which is a different type of circuit breaker. And again, that's a subject for another video. So I hope this short introduction has at least explained uh, what they're used for, fuses and circuit breakers, and how they work.